I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and today you need to share this with everyone because this is the topic of magnesium, which is mandatory for our existence, and it is sometimes a forgotten electrolyte. Now, it has been named the spark plug of our cells, and this is the key, that a spark plug will ignite or make a spark to trigger electricity, hence dubbing it an electrolyte. So this is a reminder that we are electrical beings. Now that said, magnesium has over 300 uses in the human body because of this potential over the cell. It will be in the cell for cellular energy, affecting the membranes for the cells, and it's going to be found at neuromuscular junctions. The mineral cation regulates nerve and muscle function and it helps your muscles relax. So low levels can cause muscles to tighten and contract. So it's not surprising that a lot of the symptoms of magnesium deficiency will be neuromuscular in nature, including spasms, cramping, fibromyalgia, and facial tics. Neuromuscular literally is the junction between the nerve and the muscle fiber, and that potential in between that is what is needed to fire. So magnesium is needed for heart function and rhythm regulation, and also some of the other electrical functions of the heart. So a deficiency will lead to arrhythmias. Magnesium is needed for our brain health. So one instance is low magnesium will yield migraines. It is needed in our bones because magnesium helps to absorb calcium and regulate calcitonin function. It is needed for muscle use of many types. So skeletal muscle and 30% of magnesium is stored here. So a deficiency will lead to severe muscle dysregulation. And we have uterine muscle, so when it's low, we get severe menstrual cramps or even preterm labor. And if any of you women out there may remember some preterm labor treatment when you were in the hospital, it was a magnesium drip through your IV. Magnesium is a skeletal muscle relaxant, and to that note, it will aid in sleep. It will aid in bowel motility, and if you ever took too much magnesium or milk of magnesia, which is where the magnesium is housed in a liquid form, you would understand how it aids in bowel motility. Magnesium also aids in our kidney issues and in its prevention of kidney stones. Magnesium also is for our hormone regulation, especially in diabetic management. Magnesium will help regulate the processes in our brain chemistry and low magnesium can also contribute to depression and anxiety. So, there is magnesium and lung function, such that mag sulfate is being considered with some of the inhalers to open up the bronchial tubes. So we see it is used for many functions in the body, ubiquitously so. How do we prevent loss? Well, we must eat a decent diet. So magnesium is high in some of our very nutrient-dense foods such as garlic, wheat bran, kelp, dandelion greens, barley, buckwheat. It's also found in a lot of our beans, in some shrimp, uh, also the almond, avocado, and some of the figs and dates, brown rice, pecans. So sometimes it's hard to get all of that in your diet per day. So there is a way to supplement. And one of the biggest ways to consider good supplementation is absorption is the key to this. So we have mag citrate, mag orate, 
mag lysinate, mag oxide. Now mag oxide is probably the poorest of those for absorption. Some people will do well with the citrate form, which is in a liquid formulation. My personal favorite is a reacted magnesium capsule from orthomolecular, which actually has a combination of the lysinate, orate, and citrate. So do not forget, magnesium is in nearly every cellular process in the body. Get your magnesium daily and do not forget this important electrolyte. I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD. Until we meet again, be well.